Yo, 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 what is going on? I hope everyone's having a fantastic day. Um, got some updates for the Philadelphia Eagles. I want to ramble about a few things that have been on my mind the past day and a half and some more news that has come up rumor-wise. Um, kind of want to go over all of that, especially within the free agent market, especially uh, with draft compensation. Some news on uh, James Bradbury, obviously facing the Giants this Sunday at 1 o'clock. Should be a lot of fun. And I want to apologize for the volume issues I was having yesterday. I had I had some stuff I had to reset. Um, volume was just not good. So I appreciate the patience. And I'm sorry uh, for wasting everybody's time yesterday on that to listen to that video that was very loud. So I appreciate it so much. Let's get straight into the news. Because I've seen enough horror movies to know any weirdo wearing a mask is never friendly. What is going on, guys? Hope you're having a fantastic day. So, you know, there's a few things I definitely want to talk about. I think one uh, going into this weekend, I think James Bradbury had his press conference the other day. And, you know, there was a question asked to him. Obviously, he's facing his former team this week. So a lot of questions of, you know, Brad, 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 Bradbury's not saying that. He hasn't been circling this on his calendar. And he says, oh, well, it's different from the A.J. Brown situation because they had the chance to re-sign him. The Giants just were, were dealing with cap issues which they were but obviously I don't think that Bradbury is just taking this as a normal game like I said no player that has played for a former team and obviously with a the number one team in the NFL right now that's winning like crazy uh, that he's not taking this game you know that he's just taking this game very lightly and he's just gonna play it like a normal game I highly doubt it but somebody did ask him about, would you like to stay here next year? And I look, I understand he's going to say yes, and I understand all of that. He's not going to say no, you know, so I, I get it. You know, he's not going to say anything bad, but he says he's on a winning team right now. He really enjoys it, enjoys the players here, uh, but said, you know, it really depends on if Philadelphia wants me. <laughs> and that's, you know, depending on the cap situation and the business as it being a business where James Bradbury is pretty much going to, probably at this point you know get more money it's going to happen guys he's going to get more money after this year the Eagles willing to pay it I have no idea so as much as we look at all the free agents especially on defense with Slay being here another year Hargrave a free agent Epps could walk Chauncey Garner Johnson seems like the early extension that's everyone's hoping for TJ Edwards Kaiser White you name it there's a lot of free agents on this team Barnett I mean uh, not Barnett uh, Brandon Graham um, you know what I mean? So you have a lot of pieces that are going to be walking after this year. The Eagles have two first round picks next year. As much as I look, as I go through every single week, you have two of the top five cornerbacks in the league that you couldn't ask more for. Okay. Since Bradbury is still, is still relatively young. Yeah. It would probably make sense to lock him up for another few years, but the Eagles have two first round picks. Hence why if the Eagles have a top five pick, you're not picking at fifth overall for one player. You're moving back a couple spots to get multiple first round picks. It only makes sense. You're not going to be able to sign every single player. Now, obviously, Howie Roseman can go off the deep end and restructure, restructure, restructure all these contracts and create all this cap space and just resign everybody to make a run next year, depending on what happens at the end of this year, obviously, for next year, if they want to make a run and, you know, you're going to put yourself in a, in a cap hole, uh, which you really don't want to do. Obviously, we were in a big cap hole since really 2017. After 2017, they were giving contracts to players that for past success and not from year to year success, which really pissed me off. Um, and hence why, you know, you don't want to dig yourself out of a $70 million, $73 million over the cap to try to get under the cap before free agency. Okay, so I totally understand that. So you're trying to, you're going to have to draft some positions with those two first round picks, which I think they're going to trade another pick back, which is going to be the Saints pick. You're going to have to try and, and, and trade that pick back to get another first rounder for 24 because in 24 you have two second round picks imagine getting having two first 
and two seconds for 24. You want to keep this thing rolling because once you start having too many expired contracts, you can't sign everybody and you need to draft well. Once that, once, you know, hence the past couple of years, uh, Howie Roseman has done a phenomenal job, not only on, in the off season for the draft, but in season as well for certain trades that he has made. Obviously, Robert Quinn hasn't really panned out as much, but he'll be back at the end of the year before the playoffs. But Chauncey Garner Johnson definitely was a monster trade for the Philadelphia Eagles that has panned out to be our starting safety next year. And who knows, could be pairing him up with Reed Blankenship in 2023. So um, it would be amazing. It would be pretty damn cool. Uh, But... It comes down to money and it comes down to, you know, if they want his services, it might be expensive. That's just the qual- that's just the thing. That's just the whole thing. As much as Darius Slay is going to be here for one more year, Bradbury is very important to this secondary. And maybe he'll like this team just enough to be like, you know what? I'll take a little bit of extra money, but let's get something done. I want to be in Philadelphia for a long time. So who knows? You know what I mean? Then once Slay, they make a decision on Slay after next year, then we'll figure it out. But um, I'm not worried about the Jalen Hurts contract. I know they will sign him to a big extension. And then pretty much, like, they'll move the money around to where next season the cap hit for Jalen Hurts won't be much. And they'll be able to do a lot of moves next year. So I'm not really worried about moving money around, uh, contracts, all that stuff from Howie Roseman. But sooner or later down the road, guys, they're gonna have to let they're gonna have to let some players go, and you're gonna have to use these picks. You're gonna have to draft well. You draft well, you have no issues with play. With, with, you don't have to pay players all the time and get yourself in a cap situation because of desperation. Okay, that's that's probably the most important thing. And so that was cool to see that. Seems like James Bradbury, you know, I understand he's going to say that he wants to be here, but I, I honestly think he does. I think he, and, and he even said, as, as long as Philadelphia wants me back, you know, it depends if the Eagles have interest to, to sign me back. That's a whole nother story, which they probably will most likely and probably will try to get something done before the season ends, but we'll keep an eye on that. Okay, now I want to go into the wide receiver position. This is a whole nother rant because... This OBJ shit is just, like, bothering the crap out of me. I don't know why. I think because OBJ has put so much attention on himself. And since the last, like, day and a half, it's just been, like, seeing that the Eagles are under the radar for OBJ. And would they actually make a move like this just to take him away from the Cowboys or just to do something? Even though it looks like OBJ is not going to be playing until the playoffs. Because, like I said for weeks... OBJ is not even a year removed from ACL surgery. You had the Cowboys invite him to the stadium and literally, uh, you know, serve to him and walk him around and go to the Mavericks game and all that stuff. And yet I kind of already knew the answer of what was going to happen. And it looks like OBJ health wise his ACL. He's not, I don't know if it's not, you know, the healing process or he just doesn't look the same or I don't know what it is. Um, you know, the surgery went fine, but you know, he's not even, he's less than a year removed from the surgery. So, and and on top of everything else, he wants a multi-year deal. Like if I'm OBJ right now, I'm just trying to sit out the whole entire year and get your big money. If you do want to play this year, I guess wait till the playoffs and I guess work for another contract from depending on what team you are that either gets pushed out, you know, the longer you're in the playoffs, the more you could impress teams to sign you to a multi-year extension. I mean, I don't, I don't get, and I don't think, I don't think OBJ is going to get what he wants in the multi-year extension. Like, I don't get why he's trying to get more money right now. He's trying to get locked into a team. Why don't you wait, have another off season, heal yourself up a lot more. God forbid he gets into a playoff game and he does something else that gets him hurt. You know what I mean? So that's the worry that teams are having. And that's why there's teams not giving him multi-year deals. And obviously the health is a huge problem right now. Um, Whether it's the physical or he just, there's just something with the report where he's just not where he should be right now. And he probably needs another month, another few weeks, uh, another month pretty much until he can come back. And he's just coming back at the deadline to where he could come back a year post, post ACL surgery which will be a few days after that, pretty much. You know what I mean? So I, I'm, I'm seeing rumors. That, look, and I understand like people are like, OBJ to Philadelphia is a possibility. The Eagles could be under the radar for it. I don't know. And even if he shows up or he, he signs with the Eagles, I really don't even care at this point because I'm fine with Zach Paschal. Okay, I'm totally fine. 
Yes, Zach Pascal doesn't have, I mean, a lot of fans, a lot of subscribers, a lot of people that were contacting me were saying, what do you think? Because Zach Pascal isn't going to fully replace Quez, but doesn't mean they can't use a different player to beat you in a different way. Zach Pascal has reliable hands. He's been in Nick Sirianni's system for years, for the past few seasons. He was with him when uh, Sirianni was the head, was the offensive coordinator for the Colts. So it's not like this is a player that's coming off the practice squad. Or you know, you gotta remember we have Zach Pascal. They still have Greg Ward on the roster. They might move up another guy. So who knows at this point? Greg Ward might move up. But when you look at the injury report. It, it doesn't even say, I mean, Quez Watkins is practicing right now. It's a light practice, you know, but he's still practicing. So I'm not going to take too much. In, I'm not going to talk, you know, too much into it. But like if, if Quez was really that bad, he wouldn't be practicing this week. Okay. That's just, that's just the truth to it all. Um, I don't know if he's going to play this week. So if you're only going to miss Quez for a couple weeks, I'm not really making a big deal out of it. He, if he can be back by the Cowboys game, great. If he can't, then Eagles will have to figure it out. I'm not worried about the Eagles figuring it out offensively because teams get beat in different ways. We don't re rely on Quez Watkins. Re Quez Watkins has taken a back seat to the wide receiver core, but when he gets his chances, he runs with it. And that's all that matters at the end of the day when he plays. Okay, so... Whether it's A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, whoever's that number three, you know, yeah, I would love Quez in there, but I have no problem with Zach Pascal. And some people are like, well, OBJ will be an upgrade. But OBJ will be nothing but a role player for any offense, whether it's the Bills, the Cowboys, the Giants, or the Eagles. Okay, that's just the truth. Okay, I'm not trying to, you know, OBJ putting these cryptic tweets up every day. Like, dude, just sign to a friggin' team, man. Just, just, just sign to a team. Like, enough's enough with this... Uh, Enough's enough with, with this back and forth. He's acting like he's he's 100% healthy and he's the yeah, he's the biggest free agent out there. Yeah, obviously, but between his injury and healing from it and the reports aren't looking good that teams want to don't want to sign him right now that's looking like he won't be able to start until the playoffs. He won't be able to sign until the playoffs start. So do the Eagles actually have something under their sleeves like, yeah, let's go sign this guy, add another weapon and be more dangerous? So I, I don't, I don't think much of OBJ. I, I really don't. I, I'd like, I don't want to change too much. And I know adding OBJ is probably not, I know some fans have an issue with his, his character his issue with, you know, if he doesn't get enough catches, like he was dealing with that with the Rams, even when he signed with the Rams last year, he was complaining about not getting enough catches. He was getting taken out of games. You know, not getting enough reps in games. And then finally, you know, they started using him a little bit more at the end of the year. And that Rams Super Bowl, man, he without him, they wouldn't have won that game. You know, so I was really happy for him because he finally found that chance to, you know, with his skill set to do something since he went from the Giants to the Browns, where the Browns was a huge nightmare. You know what I mean? With him and Jarvis Landry playing at LSU together and finally having to play together in the NFL was a big thing. And, you know, that was a big signing for them, but it really never worked out. And mostly it was just coaching and it was just not a great team, uh, quarterback and everything else. So I'm not, I don't care if, if OBJ signs with the Eagles, I don't care. If he signs with the Cowboys, I don't care. If he signs with the Giants, the Bills, I don't care. Okay. I feel like we can use anybody in this offense. We have so much manpower. You have, obviously, the number one offensive line in the league. You have the number one quarterback in the league. You have, the number one, you have in my opinion, the best running back in the league. I love Miles Sanders, okay? And you have the best tight end, one of the best tight ends in the league. You know what I mean? There's so much more that can overcompensate not having Quez there. They just have to beat you in a different way. And Quez isn't a focal point. If this was A.J. Brown or if this was, you know, if A.J. Brown was out for a game or if this was Devontae Smith out for a game, yeah, it would be a little bit of a hit because those are your top two guys that are getting those reps. Okay, and Quez Watkins really, you know, had that big deep catch during the Monday Night Football game against the Minnesota Vikings. He disappeared for four to five weeks. They didn't really scheme him in and then we really didn't see anything until I think it was the Jags or the Pittsburgh game, really. So it took a lot of time to get Quez back into it. And I know Quez understands that, you know? So, like I said, I'm not going to make a big deal out of OBJ, but I'm just going to say I told you so. And at the end of the, and you know, the, the second thing is, 
He just wasn't ready to play, which I kind of already knew that this was going to happen with this stupid, and he's putting out these stupid tweets every day, just trying to get attention, like, and he's, like, flirting with everybody, and it's just like getting, dude, just sign with a football team, like, really, just do something. He's not going to get the deal that he wants. If somebody signs up to a a big deal, multi-year deal, then, you know, you better hope to God that he stays healthy and doesn't get re-injured again. That's all I got to say about that if someone's trying to spend more money. And I know the Eagles are definitely not trying to give a guy coming off an ACL a multi-year deal. Okay, I think what 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 he's going to get is a one-year, less obviously a one-year, rest-of-the-year type deal, a little bit of nice guaranteed money, and that's it. And that's it, where the cap's not going to get hit too much. And, and make that his prove-it year. Make the playoffs his prove it time to where teams will sign him next year. He has a whole nother off season, but him going to the Eagles and everybody's been talking about it. The news has been all over the place that the Eagles are literally under the radar to try to get him that he's going to make a big surprise because at the end of the day, we don't know what teams that OBJ is using for leverage. You know how many players that are free agents use teams for leverage? You know what I mean? Like a lot of it's an act. Him being interested in the Cowboys is probably an act at this point, even going to the stadium going to the Mavericks game, all that stuff. It could be a big act. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to talk way too much. It could be a big act at the end of the day and could interest, like, let me try to make the Bills real jealous and let's see how much they push an offer, you know, by visiting. Once they see me in Dallas, they're going to start worrying and they're going to be calling my agent to, to give me more money or this is what players do. And I'm not saying it's just because it's the Cowboys. I'm just saying, like, they think that he's going to change their offense. It's not going to do anything for them. It really doesn't. And it, 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 he'll be nothing but a role player for any offense he plays for, whether it's the Giants, the Bills, the Cowboys, or the, or, or the Eagles. That's just what it is. If he thinks he's going to get a lot of snaps in Philadelphia, it's not going to happen. If he thinks he's going to get a lot of catches, it's not going to happen. But we're just going to have to see what happens with this whole situation. So that's pretty much what I want to rant about with that situation. Okay, and obviously Avante Maddox, yeah, Avante Maddox is huge this week. He's eligible to play. You get Dallas Goddard back for the Bears game, which is fantastic. So you're getting some reinforcements back. I'm sorry, Jose Scott, but the guy has got to go. The guy hasn't panned out. Really, I don't know who else is a backup nickel corner for this team. McPherson can't. I mean, I don't really know who else, to be honest with you. Like, I don't think anybody else, whether it's practice squad or on this active roster, I don't know who else could play the nickel. I know there's nobody else that could do it. And Jose Scott, I'm not saying he's played horrible, but it hasn't been great. But he's had some good moments. So, but he gets a lot of playing time, which is good. So it's nice to have a player that's not necessarily great, but has had a lot of starting experience. So God forbid injuries happen. He's always available and it's not a bad thing. But with, you know, we'll see what Avante Max does. Avante Max was on the injury report. So as long as he feels good this week, practices, we'll see what happens. Getting Avante Max in the secondary. We need to start getting turnovers. We need to start getting it done. We need we need to start putting our offense in good positions to win football games instead of putting everything on the offense. Which I don't care that we do that, but I want to see some. I want to see some picks. I want to see some more, uh, more turnovers from this defense going forward. And I hope with Avante Maddox added to this roster now, hopefully staying healthy and doing his thing. I think that'll be a great thing. So. On that, guys, that's pretty much it. That's my update for the Philadelphia Eagles. Nothing crazy. The OBJ stuff to the Eagles. Are the Eagles going to be cut cut clear and try to go in and swoop in and try to get this done? I don't even care. A lot of people are like, oh, go get him. A lot of people are like, oh, I don't like Zach Paschal. He doesn't replace Quez. It's going to... No, dude, like Quez is... Uh, Zach Paschal would do, would do absolutely fine. I have no issue with Zach Paschal coming in for snaps I, as an actual pure starter which I have no issue with it. So you guys let me know in the comment section below what you you guys think about the OBJ Eagles situation or just the OBJ situation in general. Let me know about the James Bradbury, what he said at his press conference, and, you know, does he want to come back next year? It's going to be interesting what the Eagles do at that position because otherwise you're going to have to draft it. You got two first round picks. You got to trade that. If that Saints pick is the top five, you're going to have to trade it back. You have no choice but to trade it back. No choice. I don't care if you have two second round picks in 24. You need more picks. So you get it top five. Teams are gonna want to trade up, and then you're gonna you're gonna get up. You're gonna get multiple first rounders because top five is a great place to trade back. That's what you're, that's what you're gonna get for teams trying to trade up for quarterbacks. To, this year is gonna be a totally different year. Um, going going into next season, obviously for uh, you know next year next year's off season in 23. Uh, So it should be interesting enough. So, all right, guys, you guys have that fantastic day. I'll see you guys on the next one. Shakes, what up? Follow slide. Peace out, guys.
Peace.